Hey YouTube, Kev here. I uh, just wanted to take a little bit of time and talk about one of the features or lack thereof on all of these new Toyota SUVs. Um, today was kind of a big day for Land Cruiser content. We finally got to see some driving impressions from all the videos, which is really cool. Um, obviously we've known about the GX for a while, um, the new Forerunner finally was released. I don't have a, a picture here because I didn't want to steal anyone, uh, you know, steal anybody's pictures for copyright issues. But here's my trusty Venture Edition, my my fifth gen, which I love dearly. And um, yeah, and then here is an inside shot of one of the vehicles I'll tell you about here in a minute. Um, but what's this all about? So I wanted to take some time to talk about overlanding in these vehicles from some personal experience and I'm sure a lot of you have had the same or similar experience um, you know a lot of a lot of folks that go camping out in the wilderness now they're using either rooftop tents if they're going solo or as a couple or with their dog or you know they're using a separate tent um, you know, uh, separate from the truck altogether because they have a, you know, a bigger family or a bigger group, um, which is all fine and dandy. Um, myself, I'm, I'm almost always camping solo and that's kind of nice because you have a little bit more room. Um, but I almost exclusively now I sleep in the back of the forerunner. Now, for a lot of you, that's probably not possible because you're too tall. Um, I'm kind of right on the edge um, at 5'8", not super tall, and I basically can fit in the back of the 4Runner with the seats down. The seats are the rear seats are still in the truck, but when the seats are folded down, it's not completely flat. Um, now I've gotten a Luno mattress, which is an expensive inflatable mattress. Um, but it works pretty well. It kind of evens out the the bump or the slant, I should say, that's in the back of the Forerunner. Um, but after watching all of this coverage of these new SUVs, man, I was really, really looking out to see if finally one of these manufacturers figured it out and made the truck a little bit more uh, sleep friendly. So, you know, you don't have to do a, a custom platform. Um, but alas, it's not really looking good. Um, so first and foremost, the, the new Forerunner and, well, I should say the top Forerunner trims, which seem to be the most focused on overlanding and, and off-roading, which are the TRD Pro and the uh, uh, Trail Hunter, they both have a hybrid engine and that's the only way you can equip them and the same goes for the new land cruiser all three trims only come as a hybrid um now the lexus is non-hybrid we'll talk about that in a minute but let's go ahead and take a quick look here um i'm going to pull up some pictures but i also wanted to point out like <laughs> It's kind of funny on the websites, um, <laughs> some of the marketing shots. Like, this is fine. Like, even with the seats up or folded down, you could you could kind of lay in the back. But, you know, your feet are going to be hanging out here. This is on the uh, Land Cruiser. Here's another Land Cruiser shot. This guy's super comfy and cozy. He's got his blanket and some pillows working on his laptop in the back. But like, where is he gonna sleep? I don't know. Cause there's like a huge bump there. Maybe the tent's just not in the shot. Um, let's see, what was the other one? Oh, here's the Lexus ones. These are funny too. So, well here you can see that rise in the floor. Um, yeah, this is another one of the GX. So this, this is probably a little bit more realistic. Um, I don't know what he's leaning on if it's the seats or if the seats are folded down and he kind of made his own platform here, but 
but yeah it looks pretty cozy um and uh yeah um cup holders in the back i feel like all the other channels are really missing this why this is here like third row or not <laughs> It's nice to have cup holders in the back when you're sleeping back there for your Gatorades because you had too much bourbon the night before um, or, you know, some extra spots to throw your uh, your headlamp um, so you don't lose that again. Um, and, and, you know, all sorts of stuff that you might want at your phone. And, and yeah, give me all the chargers. Give me all the stuff in the back. Um Anyway, I have more comments on that. I will, I'll I'll share later on, but uh, but yeah, I thought these these marketing shots were pretty funny. It's like you could live in this thing. It's like well, kind of, kind of. I mean, this this one especially cracks me up, but still looks fun. Um, looks like some Grand Canyon or some some Utah shots here. That's pretty funny. So here here's the back of the new Forerunner TRD Pro. Um, and I would imagine the uh, Trail Hunter edition is going to be pretty much identical. So you could see here it's got like this raised floor, um, but it's you know totally flat here, which looks good. But this is where the battery is, okay? And so what happens is is when you fold these seats down, um, it's not completely flat. It's it only really it it only flattens to about here. Um, as you'll see in a minute when I continue this video there so you could see look at how high that is <laughs> so that's not gonna work um, even with an air mattress that's not gonna work now when you tumble the seats you, you probably saw it there what you end up with is like a dip okay and you, you can see that Let's see if I can find. Okay, so you see. <laughs> well, let me let me show you on let me show you on the the picture. So I went to this Overland show, um, late last year, or I should say, summer of last year. So they had all the they had the Lexus GX and the, the Land Cruiser and the Tacoma on on display. The Lexus, you could actually go inside. So I, the first thing I looked at was the back cargo area, okay? So this is what the GX looks like with the seats folded up, okay? Now, this actually looks relatively promising, okay? Now, this is the Overtrail Edition, but the other should be the same. The, the other GX model should be the same. So this is the dip I was talking about. I, I think... Um, you know the dip is a little more pronounced um, with, with the Land Cruiser and the Forerunner, but um, you you do end up with like this kind of downslope. So it's almost the reverse problem that the current fifth gen Forerunner has. Um, this is the side profile. You you can't really tell from this angle, but you know so you end up with this lip here, and it, but it doesn't look that bad. Um, compared to, I think what you would end up with in the, uh, the Forerunner and the Land Cruiser. I think for the most part, if you threw a mattress back here, honestly, with one, one or two blankets, you know, you could pretty much get to a flat floor. Now, is that going to do it for most people? Mm, again, probably not. I, I did try to like lay down back here and it, Felt pretty close to the length of the foreigner, like from from hatch to the back of these seats. It's about the same. It, it may there's a chance it might be less than the current foreigner, but I'm pretty much sure it's like the same. So if you're about five eight, you could almost fit completely, you know, vertical. Chances are though, if you have like a Luno mattress or a big you know twin air mattress, you're gonna be still kind of like on a slant um even at five eight um but yeah so i wanted to bring this up because you know it's it's just like kind of a shame um that you know only the the sixty thousand dollar plus vehicle kind of has a flat floor um 
Now that said, I think on the so like the, the the model I have right now, the Venture Edition, is based off of like a TRD off road. Now the TRD off road, I think, is going to have an optional hybrid engine, um, but I I think you're also going to be able to get the non hybrid. So what I'm thinking is, if you're willing to go without the hybrid you know sure you lose some torque and power but i think it's still going to be an improvement on the current fifth gen output for sure um but i think you lose this you know this this tall section here and i'm thinking that it will be closer to the gx cargo area in terms of the the flat-ish floor. So again, not completely flat, but a little bit more workable. Um, now, why am I going on and on about this? Like, Kev, why don't you just get a rooftop tent, call it a day? Or why don't you just build a platform? It's like, well, rooftop tents are kind of a pain. And, you know, these vehicles are high center of gravity as it is, especially the Land Cruiser and the, the GX. They're, they're like taller even than the Forerunner. So, you've got that high center of gravity, which isn't great for off-roading and it's not great for driving in the mountains. But also, um, if you've ever camped in a windy environment, like in the desert, um, like Moab can get extremely windy. Um, you don't really want to be sleeping in a tent, no matter if it's a regular tent on the ground or if it's a rooftop tent. Um, and I like to, you know, when I go to Moab or something like that, I, I like to go for about a week at a time and chances are you're going to get some windy days in there so that's why i love just sleeping in the forerunner because it's it's so much quieter i sleep so much better it, it's just there's no comparison and you don't have to worry about like bugs and the sand everywhere um it is a little bit of cargo tetris you know if you've got like cargo in the back you know like with my Luno, you can flip it in half and you could like have some half the cargo in there and then sleep on the other half. But it, it is better to have like the full mattress back there. So, so a lot of times I'll end up taking like my cooler out. I'll take out any bins or whatever, and, you know, any extra gear and just put it on the ground. So that it is a little bit of Tetris. But man, I sleep so much better inside the truck. So this is a feature i was really rooting for in these new suvs especially with this whole new post-covid overlanding focus i was really thinking that one of these trucks would get it right um and i feel like maybe some non-toyotas or some maybe some even some like teslas and subarus probably have a better flat floor than these trucks which is kind of sad um but we still have some hope here. We haven't seen the reveal of the TRD off-road trim of the uh, new Forerunner, and we also haven't seen um, really any of these models too intimately with, like, in terms of what kind of accessories they're going to offer and things like that. Um, one thing I kind of regret now, I didn't at first, but I do regret not getting the pull-out cargo drawer on the fifth gen because that makes the back like totally flat and that would have been much better for sleeping sleeping in the forerunner but those were hard to come by and you can't really add that afterwards so you know oh well what are you gonna do you, but you do get a little bit more height in the cargo area so that's nice but anyway let me know what you guys think um is my analysis on point here or am i missing something am i way off um like I'm sure Luno will figure out a way to make a mattress work, you know, with any of these, and especially like this GX here, and hopefully the TRD Off-Road Forerunner. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Um, lots of interesting things to think about with all these choices. I feel like there's a little bit of something for everyone with all these different models and price ranges and trims. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, you, it's like you have to prioritize what what features are going to matter the most to you. Um, and for me, having good sleep on an overland or camping trip um, is, is pretty important. It, it's nice to be comfortable. 
So, all right, guys, that's it for now. I don't want to beat it to death. Um, leave me some comments. Please like and subscribe. And uh, look forward to some, some more Toyota content here coming soon. Thanks.